So if you live anywhere in Bedfordshire or Hertfordshire or the surrounding areas, you'll understand where I'm coming from here. Uh, it's quite early in the morning, it's about quarter to five. And uh, I'm heading up a hill uh, to take a photograph of a tree. Uh, now that might sound a little bit bland and a little bit boring, but when you live in an area that doesn't have too many areas of stunning natural beauty that are really photogenic, trees become your friend in a big way. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've photographed this tree a number of times and it has a lot of character. It stands alone at the top of a hill and it's a great tree to take photos of actually, but uh, it's still just a tree. You know, there's no outstanding mountains or beautiful lakes or hugely impressive rolling hills. Although, you know, it's nice. It's quite nice out here, but it's still just a tree. Where the sun's rising over that way, there's a few clouds. So what I'm really hoping for is that they light up for the sunrise. Uh, we'll see. So we've reached the top of the hill, uh, which is uh, Deacon Hill, which stands in the Pegston Hills on the Ignield Way. And the sun is coming up behind me there shortly. And if you look around, that's the tree that I'm going to be photographing today. So I'm going to head on over there now and start to set up. And I'll be back with you once I've got a composition in place. up with my first composition of the day uh, it's it's not light enough yet the sun needs to come up a bit more I need to get some more light in this uh, in this foreground but uh, it's just going to be a simple one uh, basically with if you look with the tree there sitting on the right hand third uh, it's a very simple basic shot The biggest problem I've got really is uh, this sky. There are no clouds in this sky. I've, I've been here before uh, at, at sunrise and got some fantastic shots uh, of, this, uh, of this tree uh, with, a, with a really beautiful sky, with the sun coming up and lighting up the clouds. And today, no clouds. So it's, it's not gonna be, uh, uh, a stunningly interesting sky, uh, which is why the tree becomes all that more important. Once the sun's actually come up, uh, I'll come round to uh, this side of the tree uh, at the top of the hill, looking out over these fields, which should be uh, lit up by the morning sun. And the tree also gets some really nice side light on it as well. Uh, one thing I will say that I, I often do, and do you know what? It's probably frowned upon uh, by other landscape photographers, I don't know, uh, but I always like to shoot a panorama if I'm not quite sure of the composition. So if I look at something and think, do you know what, there's something there, uh, but I can't quite figure out what it is, then I'll shoot a sweeping panorama and I can always, because, you, because you've shot it as a panorama over several shots, you've got higher resolution anyway because you're stitching all those shots together. So you can pull out one part of it in post-processing, you can crop down, and get the composition that you really like. I know a lot of people say get it right in camera first time and yeah if I can I'll try and get it right in camera first time I'll try and do all I can to get it right in camera first time but sometimes you just look and think I'm not sure I know there's something there I can see there's something there but I can't quite work out what it is or I can't quite get it so I'll shoot a pano and then I'll go home I'll have a good look at it once I've stitched it together in Lightroom and often what I find is that actually the picture then comes to me and I can say yeah okay that's that's what I wanted to get or equally I might find some small detail there might be some small detail that I think yeah that looks really good 
and, uh, and out of that whole panorama that I've shot, the actual picture is only a, a small fraction of it, but you know, you've, you got what you wanted. To me, that's still a creative process. Uh, it might not be what everyone else considers to be the most creative, you know, the, the best way to do it. But to me, I, I think, well, why not? I mean, at the end of the day, it's the output is what you're looking for. And the way you get to that output is up to you. And if the output's good, really matter really if you've got to it by shooting an entire scene and picking a bit out of it <clears throat> I mean if you think about it that's what we're doing as photographers anyway because if you look around you now you know you've got a whole scene here and you're pointing your camera at one bit of it because you spotted that composition so you know if you use your equipment to take a big scene and then pick out the composition later you're only doing the same thing, just uh, in a slightly different order, in my opinion. So I'm on the top of the hill now, uh, looking down on the tree. Uh, the sun's coming in from this way. Uh, as you can see, it's shining on, uh, it's casting its light onto one side of the tree, which is making it look really nice. And then in the background, you've got all these, these, these fields with their beautiful trees and, and just, the, just the, you know, the sun just washing across the land. So yeah, I think it's gonna make for quite a good shot. I've got a story actually uh, to bore you with before I go. Um, so there's this tree and uh, it's a gnarly old tree and I used to drive past it every single day and uh, always looked at the tree and thought, do you know what, that make a really good photo. And I must have drove, I must have drove past it like every day or, or you know most days for probably five or six years and never took a photo of it. And then one morning earlier this year, uh, it was uh, really cold, really crisp, really clear, and I decided to go out and uh, shoot somewhere that I thought would be a good shot. Uh, when I got there, took the shots, you know, lovely sky, you know, really beautiful atmosphere, but they were just poor because it, it, it didn't lend itself to a decent photograph. The view was lovely but there was just nothing there that lent itself that lent itself to a decent photograph so i headed home and uh on my way back i was looking around to see if there was anything else that i could find and i, I thought you know what i'll do i'll go down and take a photograph of this tree so it's a bit a bit fiddly to get there you know about to park up in a lay-by had to cut through a little hole in the hedge and probably a little bit of trespassing which you know I don't condone but I was only there for a matter of moment so and I got the shots of this tree um, and it's it was gorgeous and, and the shots were really nice and I you know probably the best that I could do them and I, I was really proud of them uh, and then literally two weeks later there was a, a storm that blew through the country and it knocked the tree over and that was it, it's gone. And if I hadn't have got those shots, then I would never have had the opportunity again because that tree was is now no more. And so basically what I'm trying to say is, is that if there's something that you see and you think, you know what, I really want to take a photograph of that. I, you know, I really like to look at that. It's really, really something that I want to, you know, capture, then go out and capture it because it might not be around forever, you know? And then once it's gone, you'll never have that opportunity again. And I've got that tree now. I've got that tree in my portfolio, if you like. And so it's always gonna be there for me. And I got that shot, I got those shots, and I'm, I'm so pleased that I did. So 
the moral of that story really is if there's something you want to get out there and take a photograph of then get out there and do it because it might not be there tomorrow anyway thanks a lot for watching and uh hopefully see you again next time mm -hmm.